to the working session that I called you will see a messy coffee shop so uh, I would like to, to uh, go through a setup of a case that I'm currently working on it will be pretty messy because I didn't prepare the, the recording at all so it will be all done uh, along the way what is the point that I'm uh, working on now uh, I am half done in setting up the case for uh, non-Newtonian flow, flow in a lid driven cavity but it's a cylindrical cavity and the lid is rotating so uh, by rotational motion uh, and viscosity it is transferring momentum to the fluid and it would be interesting because we are working with Bingham fluid uh, to see uh, in this case what are the uh, what are the yielded and unyielded regions uh, so at the moment we'll go through setting up the case and hopefully later we'll so we'll see the whole uh, si simulation uh, being done so uh, I'm, I will just read the, 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 the article that I'm trying to reproduce it's called a uh, numerical study of the Bingham fluid flow in cylindrical enclosure with exact Bingham model uh, this is where I found the, the, this case that I'm working on the, uh, the article is from journal Brazilian Society of Mechanical Sciences and Engineering from 2020 so uh, if you understood the, the my pronunciation of the title you can find it so uh, basically uh, I'm already half done I had a mesh that is was made for open form with with the block mesh I made some uh, mesh conversion for free cappuccino so uh, that's why I have this poly mesh and inside these were the uh, these were the open form files and only modification was done on boundary file uh, you will see whole process so all uh, uh, boundary conditions are of type wall with distinguished bottom uh, side walls and lid on top so in our uh, in our uh, Typology. Uh, this is boundary condition name, BC name. This is BC type. Uh, we have a couple of types implemented at the moment. These are inlet, outlet, wall, symmetry. At the moment, we are also implementing the pressure, where the pressure is is uh, given at the boundary. Next, you have the number of faces constituting the boundary and uh, starting phase. After this this one the uh, indices boundary face indices start for this uh, boundary for example uh, since start face is uh, 129 no it's uh, like 129,000 then 129,001 is the first face of the lid this is the place where uh, these boundary conditions start uh, more about geometry in future videos so this is a messy video so uh, maybe I'll fill in uh, I'll fill in the details in the future uh, just keep on staying with me uh, I opened up a terminal in current directory I just want to start part of you because here, as you see, we have a VTK folder which was produced during mesh conversion and uh, these are the VTK uh, files for the mesh. Uh, we make it for inspecting the mesh and in future it will be a template for writing the result because it's already a VTK file and you just interpolate the results into the file and uh, this is how you get the post-processing files for in the future. So let us just open. Uh, go with VTK and I can use this mesh VTM which is a multi-block version of VTK file a whole mesh is inside or any specific this one zero zero is always internal mesh and then uh, because we have three boundary regions three additional um, VTP VTU is uh, unstructured VTP is like polygon so at the moment we'll just start this one let's open it okay uh, this is the cylinder I'll just inspect it with 
circuit circuit so you see it's a multi-block mesh uh, there is some clustering towards the the uh, edge uh, which may be important in this case i'm not sure so we have five blocks central square and the uh, four in the shell this is how we decompose uh, the the circles we can make uh, so we can make uh, piece by piece structured meshes this is multi-block or sometimes this is called the h capital h topology uh, this is look from the sides uh, I made some uh, grid clustering towards the uh, lid and bottom, which will be helpful. Uh, so this is pretty coarse mesh, we can say. Uh, it's produced by a block mesh, a mesher for open foam, uh, and uh, we use a preprocessor uh, in Python to prepare the block mesh depth. The preprocessor helps creating the geometries of type of pipe pipes. So uh, we'll introduce it in the future. So what is the point of this exercise? Uh, I would like to have this top lid rotating. Uh, so on top we have a constant angular uh, velocity but the radial velocity will depend on the distance of some face uh, patch uh, from the center. Of course, uh, the velocity will be radius times uh, angular velocity. But to uh, find the radius, it, we will need the coordinates of face center of every uh, face boundary face on this boundary region for example for this one for this one they will all have different components of uh, velocity uh, and it will be fixed so boundary condition doesn't change in time once we specify in the start it will remain the same uh, because the extension of the cylinder is along y-axis we will only have a z and x components of uh, velocity and we we won't have in any in uh, y direction okay that's important uh, where do we uh, where do we set the boundary conditions in zero so where the initial uh, initial conditions are uh, because th the values set in initial phase will remain the same because boundary condition in this case are not changing in time for example in U uh, we have specified the, the values for internal field as uniform with 0 0 0 and then a boundary field uh, the order uh, of boundary, condi boundary conditions matches uh, the one in polymesh boundary file so we have uh, one boundary called bottom, it's of the reply type, uh, distribution is uh, uniform and 0, 0, 0. This is typical for any wall uh, region like in this case. But here for lid, uh, we should have something different. The later when we set it up, now we, we don't have the values at the moment, it will be non-uniform and we will have a vector of values uh, which is of the length let's go polymesh boundary 1065 values because there are, this is the number of faces in this region 1065 so we'll have a, a vector of length uh, 1065 and uh, all three components will have to be specified actually we already know the y component it will be zero because uh, the lid is in the xz plane so only there we will need to set these conditions but for the start i'll just put it like this mm, how will we do it this is a little hack this is a little hack and that's why i think this is important this uh, messy coffee shop uh, session if you look at the cappuccino code for cappuccino main 
which you can find in source then cappuccino in uh, the uh, workflow goes like this uh, after reading the, the uh, command line arguments uh, and opening this monitoring file printing the logo uh, in this monitor file which looks like this let's go here we have uh, this monitor file is called a log here sometimes I call it monitor when we open it we just write that we are running cappuccino, what is the date, and this is the logo that is printed. And this is the first part which happens until this line. So reading the command line arguments, uh, which ask for what will be the input file, for example, input nml for name list, all the parameters for uh, this simulation are set here, uh, then uh, we ask for name of the monitor file where all the results will be dumped uh, like uh, during the results during the simulation like convergence results uh, monitoring some some boundaries and etc and uh, finally we ask for name of the restart file or backup file then we open a monitor file and we just show logo so that means that we're printing the date and uh, printing the, the this ASCII art for, for free cappuccino. Then we move on to some uh, useful work. The next phase uh, we read the input file. So uh, we read everything that is in here. I won't uh, put too much data in this video about this thing because it requires uh, more, uh, more information so I'll just skip that. So uh, just let you know that reading input file it amounts to reading this. It's called input.nml but it can be called any other way. Uh, I just this is like some convention uh, convention at the moment. Uh, so it can be called whatever but I put dot nml to uh, stress that it is a uh, Fortran name list. Uh, then after reading the input file, we read mesh. Then we create the sparse matrix in compressed sparse raw format, CSR format. Uh, we uh, create fields, which means allocating all uh, variables needed in computation, allocated, allocating U, V, W, density, viscosity, all the arrays needed in computation. So in create fields, we allocate all the fields memory for all the fields and then we have this call in it and let's uh, let's look at this a little bit further in in it we have some uh, we say various initialization I have to check is this completely true because this is a working version of the code uh, we set time to zero cumulative uh, continuity error zero and then we make field initialization for example we have to initialize of course all the fields that are in important for calculation most important for fluid flow is a uh, vector field for velocity so that's why we say call initialize vector field uh, and we want to initialize so that we pass as parameters u v w components uh, gradient uh, this is gradient vector and uh, some other things for example this u is where this string will be the name of the file for because uh, in initialized vector fields takes uh, this string argument which helps uh, code to realize what file to open to read data and for example uh, for this one we open 0 and u that's it so that string u specified what file will read so you you get the picture initialized vector fields reads uh, initial conditions from 0 folder uh, similar is initial sca initialized scalar field so these uh, two routines are quite similar so we can do for 
many different types of fields. We just pass uh, as an argument of a function the name of the file in zero directory from which the fields will be read. Of course, then we specify uh, many other things like pressure, viscosity. Uh, we, we set uh, mass fluxes on the uh, interfaces. Uh, if if the simulation is restarted, so if this L read is true, we call read files and then uh, the field values are set from this backup restart file. Uh, we set initial gradients. We need this uh, for least square gradients. We need this least square coefficient matrix. And this is set in this routine. And finally, for some turbulence models, uh, we need wall distance uh, that is uh, distance from the nearest fall k omega sst is one of the models that requires this parameter in calculation and we uh, find these values solving partial differential equation of Poisson type and then we have explicit formula we find this, uh, some scalar phi let's call it phi and then from this phi scalar which is uh, a result of solution of Poisson PDE we transform it in some way and uh, we get the uh, this geometrical information which says from the specific uh, cell center what is the distance to the nearest wall and this is everything that happens in, in it and my idea let us return to our case of cylinder lid driven cavity. I want to somehow access the top uh, top wall. So just activate a part of the code that I prepared. I want to loop over all boundaries and in our case uh, we have three boundaries of type wall. So if I say PC type and give it some type it won't be able to recognize anything because we have three boundaries of same type of type wall but uh, it happens that I have a BC name array and here I can say lit then uh, uh, when code loops through all boundaries there are three of them when it reaches one with uh, boundary BC name lit it will enter the loop just to remind you why I did this, because there are three boundaries, one is called bottom, BC name bottom, BC name walls, and uh, with the, the third one has BC name lid. Uh, then I'll go, I'll loop through all the faces of this boundary. There are N faces of this boundary. So each uh, boundary region with index IB from one to none boundaries, has uh, two important things number of faces and the start face where this region starts actually after start face this region starts uh, this is important because in Fortran we start arrays from one so we decided to do it like this start face is the face after which uh, our fa boundary faces start of this specific region so uh, because I will go from one I face is ID or index of one of the faces in our boundary region it will be located uh, by adding I to start faces or IB so I face equals start face of IB plus I is uh, a one of the faces boundary faces from this boundary we can also find a, an owner of this boundary face and uh, there's one more thing uh, i to denote that it will be some integer boundary value start so uh, boundary value start array is uh, where in the array of values uh, do the values for this specific boundary start uh, we, we have 
for example, why was this important? Because we have uh, array of uh, face indices, which goes from 1 to n faces. Uh, we have array of owner indices, and we have uh, array of values for any, uh, let's say, for density, or let's say, um, yeah, let's say density. So we need density in all uh, inner cells. So there will be uh, one, two, num cells values. Then we will need. Uh, then we will need density for all the boundaries. And then we will have uh, from n to num boundary faces and this is the array of size num total because we have num total will be num uh, num total equals num cells plus num boundary faces so any field has important field has num total array size where we store uh, all values in cell centers and there are num cells of them plus we also store uh, after the num cells in same array we store the values on faces and we need to know where in this part of, of the array from num cells plus one to uh, num cells plus num boundary faces where exactly is the are the values for the this specific this specific uh, boundary region for lid? Where are these values for lid? And we can uh, we can set them. Of course, in this case, we would like to set uh, we would like to set values for u in i j n. We would like to set V in IJN, and we would like to set uh, we would like to set W for IJN. Except this one, we know it will be zero, and uh, for these, uh, we'll have to uh, find the value depending on the distance from the center of the domain because the lid is rotating but we can make it maybe more simpler first i would like to know just let's plot i would like to take the uh, coordinates of face centers for all of these boundary faces belonging to lid their coordinates are x face of i face so it will find one of the faces in the region, boundary region called the lid, and its index will be I face. And XF means face center for I face. In the same way, uh, we'll take uh, YF of I face and uh, ZF of I face. That's how we'll get all three coordinates for face centers at this. Uh, boundary. Uh, then we will be able to do following thing. Just writing, uh, we will let's say that uh, zero coordinates x and f, uh, x and z coordinates uh, start from zero, and the coordinate beginning is in the center of the cylinder. So distance. Uh, from the center of the cylinder will be square root of uh, xf of i face squared. So we are just calculate, calculating Euclidean distance <sighs> square. So this will be uh, the distance from the uh, center of the cylinder of uh, face center 
belonging to lead. <coughs> mm, the, this is the, the distance and the radial velocity will be this distance times omega where uh, omega is uh, angular uh, velocity. Okay, uh, but at the moment we can we'll say that omega is one, and let us just print these values and uh, see what happens. Okay, because I changed uh, cappuccino code a little bit, I will have to recompile it. Make I mean free cappuccino dev directory. Okay, I have some unused variables. Uh, <laughs> IB here I used IB and wasn't declared. Just go up there, and declare it. I, I recall you. This is a messy session. Oh, I started Firefox. Just a second. I don't want it. Let's make once again uh, I have some errors because this is the version that I'm working on which includes uh, this list so that I have some uh, list is uh, a library made uh, by Japanese researchers for iterative solution or linear systems so this is why I include this flag and I have this annoying uh, this annoying uh, warning oh I face huh. it also forgot I face messy things. So this happens to uh, people who work, they also make mistakes. Uh, I hope it will be finished soon. You see a compilation of cappuccino lasts maybe 20 seconds, not more, and it's done. Uh, let's go to case file. So how do we run pre-cappuccino. We can make a round script uh, and we can call cap uh, uh, oh, cappuccino. Uh, we need to give the input file input.nml. We need to give a uh, name of the monitor file, call it log or I can call it monitor. This is some kind of convention and uh, I can call lid.rst as restart the name of the uh, of the restart file or sometimes I just call it restart <laughs> nah, simple name uh, I called the uh, solver but because everything is set to zero there's nothing too much to calculate so that's why it stopped uh, working very soon I will open a monitor and show you what happened here so as I told you, uh, show logo prints the date and, and our logo. Then in uh, read input file, uh, all not namespace input file is read and uh, new values, all parameters which are which can be set in, in input file are listed. So some of them uh, have, all of them have uh, default values but some of these default values were changed uh, in our input parameter file. So uh, now we listed just to see what are the changes. Uh, some mesh data and we have initialization of U, so it entered zero U and read internal field, boundary field and all this. But as you remember in init, we asked it after finishing uh, this initializing vector field UVW to plot to print these values uh, related to geometry of the domain. We wanted 
face center coordinates for faces, boundary faces belonging to lid. We wanted x, uh, y, and z coordinates for face centers, and we also wanted the radial distance. And let's see this thing. As you see, uh, y coordinates remain the same. The, the lid is of height 1, so this uh, hasn't changed. Uh, these are uh, important coordinates, and this is the, uh, let's say, radial, radial uh, distance for uh, from the center. Uh, we had only one iteration. It started iteration, but just one iteration because everything was set to zero, nothing to calculate. Uh, so. Uh, this small exercise will show a small we showed a small hack um, how to extract some values ge re related to, to geometry from the part of the code. And if we can play with that and put real code into free cappuccino uh, and play around because compilation takes 20 seconds so it doesn't matter so too much. But uh, we can. We would like to do something uh, different now. As we saw, this is the radial distance. So uh, let's do uh, one thing. Uh, either we will leave this part of the code for a spe uh, specific case and set velocities here, or we will just uh, print the values, copy them and put them into uh, zero slash u file and just put it here maybe uh, that's a good idea uh, just give me a second of pausing to think about it which uh, which one will i use and then i'll retur return to uh, recording Uh, if you hear a uh, slightly white noise in the background, is a uh, heater that I turned on for this case. So, uh, actually, I decided that we can go with like this because I want to uh, do this hack and do this hack and clean the code. We will just print the values that we need and uh, we will uh, erase this part of the code. So, uh, it didn't do. Uh, didn't bring uh, a pen and paper like a, a digital pen for for this case so i'll just uh, explain with words and i'll hope you people will understand so uh, let us do following thing let us take this and have a variable called distance yeah, distance which equals to this thing in this case uh, we'll have uh, we can find two things. First, we can find a cosine. We will co we'll call it cos a. Let alpha be an angle, and uh, cosine of that angle will be. Uh, let's just take it as x f of i face over distance, and sine. Of that angle will be zf of i face over distance. We know the faded distance will be zero because uh, at least some cells are away from the one, but uh, let's make it sure. Let's just plus one in. Let's add a small number. Let's add a small number. It will make our calculation a little bit uh, different. It minus minus 20, so it is 1 to the power of 10 to the minus 20. So I if it happens the distance, uh, we have a cell face with center exactly on the uh, center axis, then distance will be 0 and we will have a none. But this is the case, uh, you just need the cosine and sine of the angle. Uh, then we will need we will have velocities because we we will we said that uh, magnitude of the velocity 
uh, well mag will be uh, distance times omega uh, omega the uh, angular velocity but we will set omega to be 1 that's why velocity magnitude will be equal to uh, distance so just let's have it like this for easier not notation uh, the velocity radial velocity vector will be uh, 90 degrees will have a 90 degrees angle so it will be orthogonal to the uh, radius vector it's well known for from uh, kinematics that's why x velocity will be let's say uh, it will be will mag times so now nat will not use cosine which will be which would be a projection of the radius vector but will have sine alpha and z well will be minus well mag time cos alpha i hope this this is fine so you can you can check all this by drawing the circle then the some uh, radius vector and the uh, radial velocity vector which is uh, perpendicular to this radius vector so if for radius uh, vector the uh, coordinates are co uh, cosine alpha and sine alpha then for this vector which is uh, perpendicular to this one the coordinates will be sine alpha and minus cosine alpha and then finally the velocities will be printed x well we have zero and uh, z well this is what we'll write in the file okay uh, we need distance cos sine alpha well mag x well z well we need to declare all this it's not efficient uh, uh, to declare so many uh, new variables on the stack but never mind this is just for the exercise uh, we'll have variables to type real dp is double precision this is uh, everything is set in dp here so as i said we have cosine alpha sine alpha we have velocity magnitude we'll have uh, of course distance we forgot about that we'll have x velocity and we have z uh, velocity okay let's compile this in in uh, uh, well ah, there was an error typing error in line 77 so let's go there uh, well amag well mac okay let's compile this wait a few more seconds hope it's done yeah everything is fine uh, this is some annoying warning which I will try to find a way to uh, delete somehow okay let's start as previously Pop. tried to to write uh, a vtk file after one iteration and it did it but no results there because everything is set to zero let's open monitor file reload it huh. okay these are the values that we are looking for 
uh, did we set everything correctly let us see here just one more time these are two important things that I wanted to pay attention to hope I didn't make any error because I'm doing this along the way so mm, hope you're okay so now we can copy all the values we have thousand and how many values we have uh, a thousand and sixty five for every cell face center of the lid go down go down go down pop will copy all this We'll go here and say that lid is declare and non-uniform. And instead of two zeros, we'll have a vector of 1065 values. Now, if everything is correct, we don't need all of this. Because the uh, information about the uh, lid wall will be in U file and when it calls initialize vector field everything will be initialized properly including the lid wall uh, let's just move this maybe I will need it later so I'll just take like integer I put these and I'll just comment them so they are not used and let's compile code once again and this is general way how to make a hack how to access a part of the code where geometric information is, is uh, taken and manipulated to be able to produce a non-uniform vector of values for a certain boundary uh the thing that we uh, the thing that we assumed here is that the velocity is specified angular velocity omega was specified to be has specified to be one uh we can change it in the future uh now i cleaned the code so nothing remains uh, from uh, this uh digression and uh let us see because I didn't uh, do much about these parameters. Let us run code one more time and see what happens uh, now. Because we changed the u, the zero u uh, file. Let us just call this once again and check is everything running fine. And now we have some values. We'll just stop and maybe open the monitor file I'm not sure do we have yeah we even have some convergence here really strange really strange we have some number because I didn't check all the parameters and I'm not sure what is the Reynolds number what is the Bingham number for this case uh, I'm, I'm even calculating some wall shear stress here let us see do we have you know plot plot residuals hmm. results are converging it's it's interesting it's interesting uh i don't see uh the one for uh, ux never mind but anyway this is the way you can uh set non-typical boundary conditions something that was not uh, initially uh, provided for the code this uh, rotating lid boundary condition but uh, because the velocities are specified over there we found a way to set them properly and uh, have the simulation running so th 